shut up compressor. Hey everyone, Matt here with Duke's Models, and welcome to episode 9 of the P38F build. So, in the last installment, I got stuck in a bullshit side quest dealing with the HGW wet transfers for the stencils, but managed to get past it, do some touch-ups, and now we are ready to get into weathering. Now, the first big step before the weathering begins is to put a different clear coat on this, like a semi-gloss or a semi-matte type of thing, to work with oils. Before I do that, however, I have two main things I want to try to accomplish. The first is to deal with this no-step stencil right here, which is actually a straight-up decal. Uh, as you can see, it is surrounded by a lot of chipping, so it doesn't exactly make sense that it's sitting there all on its lonesome, unscathed. So I need to go ahead and find a way to scuff it up a little bit. Most of the reference photos that I have that show this area cleanly show it still very much in existence. It's not something that got worn away with the stuff around it. I'm guessing maybe the extra layer of paint provided just that extra little bit of durability. But it's still, you know, scratched and worn away at the edges a little bit and kind of scuffed and all that stuff. So I want to try to replicate that if I can without fucking up everything that I've got going on around it that is so nice looking. The other thing that I want to try to deal with is the stencils on the prop blades, which, as you can see, are a much greener shade of yellow than the prop tips and the spinner rings and all that stuff. And so my idea here is to come in with some clear orange, perhaps, or some clear yellow mixed with clear orange, and just see if I can just spritz it on here and get these things to go a bit less green. But first, let's go ahead and scuff this fucker up. So, I think what I am going to try is my rougher fiberglass pen. It's going to be tricky because it's going to require that I don't touch too much other stuff. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do. We'll find out. I don't think that's going to happen. That's just, it's too big of a diameter and too much at risk. You know, fuck it up. Oh, well, you know what? Maybe I can do it. Maybe a little bit of trimming of the point will help. I combine with a little bit of tip of the knife work. Okay, that's looking rather more scuffed up. I think that'll work. that will work for what I'm trying to do there. Next up, the props. Okay, to tackle the green tinted yellow stencils on the props, I've mixed up some Tamiya clear orange and clear yellow. Thin down with some Mr. Leveling Thinner, and I'm just going to really hope that this works. I mean, that seems to be doing the trick. It's very subtle. God, I can't believe that worked. And I 
They're still not as yellow as the prop tips, but they are getting into the family. Yeah, that's a that's a market improvement. Nice. Alright. Get this one wrapped up and then we'll start thinking about clear coats. Okay, now it's time to do some unglossing with some MRP semi-matte clear. Okay, the semi-matte coat is down, and now it's time to start moving into the weathering proper. Next, before I jump feet first into the weathering, I have this odd compunction to go ahead and get the wheels sorted out. Now for the nose, I'm still planning on using the Ultracast block tread covered wheel. Uh, I like the shape of it, I like the detail on the tread, it fits well, and I find it a bit more pleasing than the kit wheel. And for the mains, I'm planning on using, for the first time in God knows how long, the kit tires. Why? Mainly because they fit really well and they align really well and they even have these little lugs that help them align really well. However, the, they do mean a little bit of extra work because of that. Namely, if you look at the center seams here, the tread kind of falls off or doesn't match up, so I've had to go in here and restore quite a bit of that. And also, they don't sit flat. So that's what we're going to take care of right here. Now, not sitting flat isn't a big deal. It's more a matter of identifying where the contact patch of the tire is and then sanding it flat from there. And to identify where the contact patch is, basically I put some pieces of tape on a sheet of glass. And I painted some Vallejo green of some kind. I just picked one randomly. Just kind of smeared it on the tape with a toothpick and then set the P38 down so that the wheels we're touching where the tape was and where the paint was. Just kind of let it there for a minute, picked it up, and boom, we have the contact patch on both wheels. Now it's a matter of knocking that down so that we have a tiny bit of a flat spot. They look really weird just sitting on that perfectly round thing. So for this, I'm gonna use some Goodman sanding blocks. This is the 80 grit to really chew through the plastic. And basically just going to I've got this held like this, like this. Yay, flat spot. The reason I'm using the Goodman blocks here is because they are perfectly flat. And so I don't have to worry about any weird corner rounding or bullshit like that that I would get if I was trying to use a standing stick to do the same thing. I know it's hard to see from up there. Yeah, that looks good. So now I can move on to painting these things. Excelente. Okay, so I've got the wheel hubs painted up with some Moto T23 matte aluminum. And as various metallics are wont to do, it had some overspray. So now it's time to reduce some of that overspray and get ready to go ahead and paint the actual tires a sort of darker rubbery black color. So for this I'm using just some Liquitex acrylic black ink. This stuff is great because it doesn't really move from where you put it. And it can give me that nice sharp demarcation around the wheel hub. And it can reduce some of that silver so that when I come in with the next round of paint, 
that paint's only having to worry about coloration, it's not having to worry about covering the silver. Okay, so the hubs have been blocked out with Liquitex black ink. Now it is time to go ahead and actually paint the tires themselves. And for this, I'm going to be using Vallejo Panzer Aces Dark Rubber with a little bit of track primer thrown in just to dirty it up and a little bit of AK's third generation acrylic thinner. The reason I'm taking it browner and whatnot is because serving in North Africa, these are going to be dirty tires. So why take it too black when I can just start from a slightly browner, grayer look anyway. And I'm brushing versus airbrushing because eh, it doesn't really matter all that much. They're going to be dirty. Okay, so the tires are all painted up, and while they're doing their whole drying thing, I'm going to go ahead and move on to the gear bay doors, because something I didn't think about earlier in the build, when I was weathering up these interior panels, well, when you come in and drop them into the outer panels, I think this might be upside down, oh well, who cares, uh, they're dirtier than the outer panels. Oops, so I need to come in and provide a little bit of grunge and grime to the inside of the outer panels. And I'm going to be doing this with Mr. Weathering Color just like I did with the gear doors. There's really no point to doing any sort of like aqua gloss washing like that because you're just basically only seeing the perimeter. But all I'm doing with this is getting some of the Mr. Weathering color laid down. Basically just carrying it down as far as I dare before it touches my finger because I'm too lazy to find something to mount these two and they'd be bouncing all over the place anyway. So just get the color on there. Get the Deerfoot stippler. There's really nothing fancy about these. We're literally just getting the borders sorted out. Getting them grunged up. Yay. Okay, next I'm coming over the grayish brown with some sandy wash. that. Kind of rinse and repeat for all these. Okay, so next up I'm adding some shading to the gear struts with some ammo dirt shader. I'm using this stuff a little bit on the Tank the Rainbow projects and I really like it. Almost like a very lazy pin wash. It's great for getting 
corners and fastener heads and things like that. And doing all the stuff that a pin wash would typically do. Okay, so the main strut itself is going to need a little bit more oomph than what we've been doing to the folio scissors. That's looking pretty good. I don't know why I'm bothering up here because it's not going to be visible. I Man, I didn't even deal with some of the ejector pin marks. Right well, we're in here. So while I'm in here playing with the shaders, I'm going to go ahead and treat the wheel hubs as well. Okay, so the ammo shaders have had overnight to set up, and as you can see, they get a lot less opaque and a lot less stark as they dry. I think things here are looking pretty solid. Set those aside for the moment, and now it's time to deal with the tread and contact patch on the tires. Now, if you think about tires and the way that they run through different materials, you know, muddy ground is gonna get the entire contact patch and all of the gaps between all of the tread lugs, all muddy. But when you're just running over dust, it only tends to pack up on the actual lugs themselves, on the face, as opposed to in every single individual little groove. And so that's something I'm going to try to capture a bit here. And I'm going to do that using three paints. But first I've got some Tamiya XF60, good old Dunkelgeld. Got some... JG STF Brown, XF72, it's a nice kind of grayish looking brown, and then some medium gray, XF20. And so what I've done is I've mixed these in three little paint cups. So here's our brown, Dunkelgeld, and then I went ahead and mixed some gray and Dunkelgeld together to get sort of a dirty grayish type color. These have all been thinned pretty heavily with Mr. Rapid Thinner. Now it's time to do a little bit of spraying. So I'm not only getting the tread, I'm also getting sort of the side the very top of the sidewalls there.
All right, now we're gonna move on to our Dunkel Gelt. We should do the same thing. But a bit more splotchy. And when the air pressure is turned down so low, like I'm probably at, I don't know, five or six right now. It doesn't atomize as well, which means you get more like a spatter effect going. It's kind of like stippling. So that's exactly what I'm going for. I'm trying to get a little bit of tonality in here. So you can see it's definitely a dustier, lighter tone than just the brown itself. Okay, now we're moving on to the sandy gray color, the mix of Dunkelgelb and medium gray. Okay, so now this is probably going to look like overkill in the moment, but I'm using a wash of ABT 502 Shadow Brown and VMS Universal Weathering Thinner, or Weathering Carrier. And I'm basically sludge washing the treads. Making a big old mess. Hopefully for a point. Give that a minute. Let's go get the little guy here. Now the reason I'm not going with black, I think it would be too stark. I basically want to keep the shadow detail. there, so it's just not all looking totally caked in dust, but black would be a bit standout, whereas when I remove the shadow brown from the top of the lugs here, hopefully this will give me a little bit, de bit of definition so that when I want to come back and play with maybe some pigments or something, I can do it just out, I can do it without turning the whole thing into a big joke. Maybe. Stark. I think I'm going to have to let this dry and see what I think of it. Okay, so the Vallejo Gloss Black has had a little bit of time to dry, and now it's time to treat the oleos on the landing gear struts. And for this I'm going to be using some of Ushi's Chrome-type metal polishing powder. I've used this before to great effect, and so it'll probably fuck up this time. Nah, I'm kidding. One thing I like to do is use it over the little vat because this shit falls off like nobody's business. This way I can do this without making a huge mess all over the bench. Not that, you know... paper I've got out here is clean or anything, but I basically just don't want to 
get a bunch of metallic powder that will get on everything any more spread around than it needs to be. But as you can see, just get a little bit on a brush that is basically given over to this task. Keep applying, keep building up. Keep sort of brush buffing it. And before you know it, you've got a nice shiny oleo. And it's pretty hard to fuck this up on silver lacquer gear struts because this stuff reacts a lot more with the black paint. It shows up a lot more with the black paint than it does with the silver. So if you're a little bit sloppy, it's not that big of a deal. So sometimes if we're talking about a larger scale or a larger aircraft, you know, say a 132nd scale, something like that, I like to actually come in here and airbrush that gloss black with, you know, a Guns GX or something like that, like something fearsomely shiny and smooth, and then mask it and paint the rest of it, and then come back and put this on at the end. Honestly, in 148 scale, it's so small of an area, especially on something like a P-38, that that effort just seems wasted. So, we're going to do this. So those are certainly looking the business. We're about ready to start putting brake lines on these things. Okay, next up, let's start weathering the props. Now, what I want to do with weathering the props is basically reduce the prominence of the prop stencils a little bit. We already toned them down with the orange, but I want to take them even further because in a lot of photos they are not all that noticeable. The kind of thing where you have to sort of squint. So I'm using some black oil brushers here. The ever not user friendly tube. And then basically just stippling this around. And we'll come back over this with some other tones too. a little bit out over here so we're not wasting it. So there you can see the bottom two have been treated, the top one is not, and those data stencils are a lot more toned down. Why did I set it down? Oh yeah, because I have to pick up the fucking oil brush. Next up, let's move on to the actual P-38. The black doesn't have too much use on the actual airframe in terms of weathering. Yank the gear shred out. More room to work. However, I do want to add a little tiny, tiny bit up here around various gun mounts. Not a lot. Very, very gentle amounts. Okay, so let's go ahead and dirty up the turbos a little bit. Got a selection of fine oils over here. Stay on your toothpick, you piece of shit. Now this is very much just the start.
basically what I'm doing is just hitting it in a stippling motion. dirtier like that. Okay, so somewhere along the way in shooting clips for episode 9, I feel like I ended up jumping around from bit to bit to bit to bit in a very disjointed way. And it probably doesn't help that the past several nights at the bench have felt kind of like Buster Keaton movies, with some minor little elements of disaster striking here and there. Like, for example, the turbocharger, one of the front pieces of the turbocharger, somehow getting knocked off the bench. Uh, I'm honestly wondering if a bug of some sort didn't do it, and then getting run over by my bench stool unknowingly, which resulted in having to remove some paint, so I have to repaint this whole fucking thing now. Great. There's also my own my own bad move of having the gun barrels placed precariously in the nose and then picking up the P38 and dropping a shitload of them on the floor. I found all of them except for the longest machine gun barrel, which was completely missing somewhere in the black hole of the floor until last night when I found it, and see if we can get this thing to focus this close, it got run over, and it's now flattened. Yay! So it's a good thing I've got the quick boost barrel sitting around as a backup, I can just swap those in, so it's not too much loss, but still a bit frustrating. Anyway, I feel like what's needed is almost a bit of a reset, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to end episode 9 here and then pick up episode 10 with essentially putting oils and doing the OPR thing onto the main fuselage, which as you can see is already started here, but I will pull back into episode 10. So we'll do a little bit of time shifting. So that way we'll have the weathering kind of up to getting onto the airframe and then the next episode will be weathering on the airframe itself. So I apologize, uh, I guess in advance of you seeing this because I haven't edited yet, but also, after you've seen it, because this is at the end of the episode, uh, if episode 9 is a bit disjointed and jumpy, I will try to clean that up as much as I can and make sure that what I'm doing makes some degree of sense, uh, at least as much sense as it makes in my head, and then we will pick back up with episode 10 and getting oils and all the fun stuff down onto the actual P-38. So, thanks for watching through episode 9. I apologize if this one seems a bit disjointed and a bit jumpy. It's kind of the nature of having to bring weathering to a whole bunch of different elements of a rather complicated airframe. So, 
Thanks for watching. Catch you all later.